It sounds like science fiction, but this is real. It's funded and it is starting in Britain. In an age of climate panic and extreme weather, the UK is preparing to tinker with the most powerful force in our solar system, the sun itself. Could we dim the sun to help prevent global warming? Well, the UK is set to spend £50 million on geoengineering experiments, with the aim of reflecting sunshine back into the Earth's atmosphere. This could involve putting aerosols into the atmosphere, or brightening clouds with seawater. While not a permanent solution, this could theoretically slow down warming, and give humanity more time to cut carbon emissions. With the world on the brink, some scientists and policymakers are considering an unsettling solution. What if we could cool the Earth? without cutting emissions. The UK government is preparing to fund up to 66 million in research aimed at dimming the sun. Yes, dimming our sun to reduce global temperatures. Bill Gates is backing the first high altitude experiment of one radical climate change solution, creating a massive chemical cloud that could cool the earth. It's called solar geoengineering and it's highly controversial. It would look something like this. Thousands of planes would fly very high and use nozzles to inject millions of tons of light reflecting particles into the stratosphere. It would create a thin chemical cloud of those particles around the whole planet, blocking some sunlight from reaching the surface. It would mimic a giant volcanic eruption, which we know cools the Earth. Back in 1991, Mount Pinatubo erupted in the Philippines. It was the largest eruption to affect a densely populated area, creating avalanches and giant mud flows that left more than 700 dead and 30,000 homeless. It also spewed a cloud of 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide particles into the stratosphere. That chemical cloud was hundreds of miles across and reflected about 2% of sunlight back to space. And in 1992, the Earth was cooler than in 1991. That is part of the mechanism, but you do this in a controlled way. Modeling studies have found that it could reduce the intensity of heat waves, for instance. It, it, apparently it could reduce the rate of sea level rise. It could reduce the intensity of tropical storms. A 2016 opinion poll conducted by the Harvard group doing solar geoengineering research found that 67% of subjects support its use. One reason this technology is appealing, it's cheap. One study estimates it would cost an average of $2.25 billion globally every year for the first 15 years of deployment. Compare that to the half a trillion dollars the U.S. government estimates it will cost just the U.S. by 2100 if no action is taken against climate change. Or the $1.6 to $3.8 trillion projected global spending by 2050 on low-carbon energy production. You can also compare it to direct air carbon capturing, another climate change solution backed by Bill Gates and by Big Oil. It involves sucking billions of tons of carbon out of the air. And at $1 to $200 a ton, it could be big business. Solar geoengineering, on the other hand, is so cheap that nobody currently stands to make money from the process. It doesn't require a lot of materials. It doesn't require a big innovation. It basically affects the whole planet with one project. So that is not necessarily a situation that has a lot of profit opportunity, right? Because there's not going to be a lot of different people that can do it and compete in a marketplace. Bill Gates is among a dozen individual donors and 14 foundations backing the first stratospheric solar geoengineering experiment out of Harvard. It's called Stratospheric Controlled Perturbation Experiment, or SCOPEX. A high-altitude balloon will lift instruments about 20 kilometers into the stratosphere, where it will release less than 2 kilograms of different naturally occurring chemicals, like calcium carbonate and sulfates, and then measure the change in atmospheric chemistry and light scattering. A study found that no existing aircraft can inject the stratosphere at a high enough altitude, but developing a new high-altitude tanker would not be technologically difficult or prohibitively expensive. Nozzles still need to be designed that can continuously blast out trillions of particles, and scientists still need to decide what chemicals those particles should be made of. But unlike cloud brightening, which is another solar reflection technique, the tech needed for stratospheric injections is not far off. The technology is not the main thing that's holding this back. The main thing that's holding it back is the uncertainty about what the exact effects would be and the positives and negatives of its effects and the, the governance and decision-making process for implementing it. Planet-wide solar geoengineering will require buy-in from the international community. You know, in our simulations we found China got warmer and drier relative to the past when you stabilized global temperature, and India was now cooler and wetter. So you can see there 
how you know international relations around using this technology could become complicated. There's this the real concern that we won't be able to reach agreement, we being the entire planet. And so there's the prospect that countries just go ahead and do solar geoengineering and that causes disagreement, conflict, tension, even possibly war. The science involves reflecting a portion of sunlight back into space, mimicking the cooling effects of volcanic eruptions. The approach, known as solar radiation management, could offer a temporary climate reprieve. This strategy could theoretically offset global warming. It's a plan B, a planetary sunshade. While cutting emissions and capturing and removing carbon are essential, say scientists, it's not enough. So experts are ramping up efforts in solar geoengineering. Geoengineering in the atmosphere, such as injecting sulfur-based particles high in the stratosphere to reflect sunlight, or thinning high cirrus clouds that would allow trapped heat to escape, or brightening low marine clouds to make them thicker and better at reflecting the sun's heat. With high cirrus clouds, which trap more heat than they reflect, the aim is the opposite. The drones could seed clouds to reduce their thickness and longevity. But the effects of thinning some clouds and thickening others are not fully understood. Yet there is no atmospheric study more controversial than stratospheric aerosol injection. Dispersing sulfur-based particles that could cool the planet more quickly than other methods, but at what cost? 